Disclaimer, some of the content may discomfort or offend some people. If you're offended by seeing Nazi symbols or war in general, click on a new video. Viewer discretion is advised. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're still here, you've agreed that you're all right to everything that may be offensive that's in the video. Enjoy watching. Hello guys, welcome to another United 009 video. Most of you know what a tank is. They're strong and armored, and of course, a ground vehicle. Most people wouldn't think about sticking wings onto them, but in today's video, we're going to be looking at exactly that. The actual attempts to make tank gliders. From the Soviets, Japanese, British, Germans, and John Walter Christi and their attempts to make tank gliders. Let's go back to the year 1932. John has a genius idea to put wings onto a tank. In a modern mechanics publication, it says it would be an armored tank which flies as swiftly as a bombing plane and can travel over any terrain at 70 miles an hour. The publication also says it can make tent warfare well nigh impossible by using a swarm of flying tanks descending into no man's land. Also found in the publication is a design mock-up of it and how it would work. But you may remember, if you were listening to your teacher ramble about World War I, there were never any flying tanks. Needless to say, his idea did not go through. To read the full publication, you can find it in the description below. Let's jump to 1942. The Axis advancement into the USSR has been halted. During this time, they saw an issue with dropping tanks from aircraft. The issue was that the tank and crew dropped separately, meaning it took longer to be operational. Their genius solution, of course, to order Oleg Antonov to design a glider designed specifically for tanks. But of course, he was more ambitious. Instead of building a glider, he added a detachable cradle to a T-60 tank, bearing large wood and fabric biplane wings and a twin tail. Once it glided into the airfield, the tank could be operational within minutes. Ambitious planes, if I do say so myself. But of course, there were issues with this. The tank was too heavy. And of course, a glider cannot be a glider if it's not able to glide. So they removed its armament, any mission, headlights, and most of its feel. Even with all that said though, with its only flight, the tank had to be ditched to avoid crashing. Also, the lack of sufficiently powered aircraft to tow it at the required 160 kilometers an hour or 99 miles per hour caused the project to be abandoned. It's now a year later. The Axis are in a bit of a situation. On the Eastern Front, the Soviets are finally pushing forward towards Berlin. And on the Western Front, the control over most of Europe by the Axis is slowly coming to an end. Unlike the Soviets though, the design the Japanese thought of was designed more like of the aircraft used at the time. But instead of having a cockpit, there was a tank. Also being developed during the time was another tank glider design. But nothing really mattered. The Pacific War wasn't going well for the Japanese. They lost air supremacy to the United States Air Force. Meaning even if the project went perfectly and was released as soon as possible, the chances of getting intercepted or shot down was rather high. Other factors like technical problems, poor maneuverability of the glider and stress on tank led to the project being cancelled. The other project was cancelled too. It's the 1940s. The war effort has been going perfectly. The invasion of France has gone perfectly due to a fatal mistake the Allies made. The Axis powers are also starting to take over places in Africa. Also during this time, Germany was developing a glider for tanks. The aircraft were to be built using wood, making it quite structurally strong. But that also came with its equal problems. Junkers, the company that was developing it, 
didn't have much experience with such materials. The cargo it was meant to hold was 20,000 kilograms, but it dropped to 16,000 kilograms. Then again, to 11,000 kilograms. The project was dropped a year later due to inherently poor design. Finally, it's 1941. The war effort hasn't been going well for the Allies. Europe is now mostly controlled by the Axis powers at this point. The Germans' attempt at the tank glider has been dropped, but they probably did not know that until years later. The Bayne is backed. It is a British tank glider that was meant to be used. The design of the aircraft wasn't that special. Its two wings stuck together with a place in the middle for the tank. Tests were overall successful, but you can't spell tank glider without tank. The British sadly weren't able to find a suitable tank for the job. Also, a decision to make gliders which of the cargo would be carried within the fuselage caused the project to be cancelled. Well, that's all the misfire attempts at creating a tank glider. Do you guys think that a tank glider could be possible nowadays or would it go down the path of the attempts in this video? Put your answers in the comments below. On the screen, you can find my Twitter, Discord server, channel, and a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.